The most successful people in business and romance often have one thing in common. They manage their time well, because they understand that time is by far our most valuable commodity. If you have a full-time job and you're trying to date around, I mean, you might have a few hours after work each night and maybe the weekends, and that's about it. So you can't be spending your time endlessly messaging women and trying to set up dates that go nowhere. You need to be really smart about what you're focusing on. But the trick is not only to just think about what you should be doing more of, but actually what you should be doing less of and what's wasting your time from getting the dating results you want and actually growing. I'm Nick Notice, and today I'm gonna teach you the seven most common ways I see men waste their time in dating so that you can get better results faster. And number one is delaying sending messages or texts after you meet a girl or match from online. I know there's so many rules about like playing it cool and don't message too quickly and maybe you guys met at some party and you gotta wait five days before you reach out, but I promise this is a huge time sink. Because honestly, if a girl likes you or she's attracted to you, like she met you at a party and you guys hit it off, or she swiped with you online and she finds you desirable, then she wants to connect. She's not gonna be thinking like, oh my God, I met this great guy out and then he followed up with me a day later. That was too quick, he must be a freaking weirdo. And I also see guys do this like after they have a first date with a woman that went well and maybe they even kissed and hooked up a little bit, but then they like wait four days to reach back out and they think they're being cool, but the woman is just like, hey, I thought we had a really good moment together and maybe this guy isn't as into me as I thought or maybe he's dating other girls and they'll actually pull back and be cold to you because they don't feel that you're investing in them. Now, obviously I'm not saying like be desperate and like message a girl six minutes after you just talk to her, but like, don't worry about, oh man, I'm gonna message her within 24 hours or three days. Just follow up with her. Because if you're delaying your messaging, you're often still thinking about that woman and wishing that you could connect with her. You're also still sometimes trying to come up with the perfect line, which is ruminating and, and, and messing with you. And then inevitably, you're actually gonna end up probably being more needy when you reach out or overthinking it. But you're also kind of shooting yourself in the foot because you're going to take longer to eventually move a date forward. You're also gonna, again, encourage her to be kind of cold and aloof back. But then it just takes way longer to set up a date. Instead of just like hitting her up, talking a few times back and forth and making plans that day or the very next day to like do something in the future, you take like seven days of text intermittently to do that, like that is a huge time sink. So if a girl messages you and you've got your phone in hand, don't wait to reply. Like just do it organically because you're actually there. If you meet a woman and she gave you her number, don't wait for more than like 24 at most 48 hours to reach back out. And if you had a great date, and especially she was vulnerable with you personally or intimately, don't just leave her hanging and make her think that she made a huge mistake, you know, investing in you and giving, you know, herself to you. Actually show her that you enjoyed that time and just reinforce that you're excited about the connection as well. Number two is texting for days or weeks or sometimes even months on end. So not only do guys often delay even reaching out or responding, but then when they do, they kind of keep this, you know, thing going for a long time because they think that they're, you know, building a stronger connection and actually getting to know one another. And that's going to increase their likelihood of a girl actually liking them and committing to hanging out. If you're just like a faceless person with some words on a screen, like they just don't feel close to you, right? We don't have that shared eye contact, hearing the, the sound of somebody's voice, all these little facial expressions, our physical closeness. It just feels so detached from the experience. And I can't tell you how many times a guy met a girl from online dating and they're texting and texting and texting. And maybe the girl is starting to open up and write longer messages. And they're like, wow, this is really getting strong. She's gonna totally be into me. We're gonna have a bunch of great dates. This is worth Working. And then all of a sudden they're texting for a week or two and the woman just goes MIA. At some point she just stops responding and really starts to ghost and flake out. And they're like, oh my God, I thought we had something. But at this point, you're just messages on a screen like 10 other dudes she's been talking to and you're not even a real person. And that's the whole point is like, you're imagining in your head that you're actually getting to know a girl and really feeling close. And we all wear masks online and over text. You don't really know that person. Now, on the flip side, like not only have I seen women just like abandon a guy that they've been talking to her for a while, I've seen a guy finally meet up with that girl and realize like they're totally different than what they've been putting on and they're not compatible or they're not even that into each other. And now you've spent a month talking to somebody that you don't want to see again. So if you are into a woman, 
you should be messaging her for one day or two at most before taking it to a more personal medium. Even if that's a phone call or a Zoom video call or an in-person date, any of those are gonna actually create some real connection and that's where she's gonna feel more likely to actually wanna keep exploring that and invest in you personally. Number three was one that I did and tons of guys I know still do, which is you read or watch way too much advice like this video than actually implementing it. Advice is good. Understanding the theory of courtship and what flirting means and how to build self-confidence is fantastic. But there comes a point where you're saturated with knowledge and it's not serving you. We need to grow and we need to implement our ideas to actually gain experience and build skills and create opportunities for ourselves. The truth is, if you're watching this video and you've watched other videos of mine or read other stuff from people, you probably have more knowledge about self-improvement and dating than all generations of previous men. And so you just need to understand some of the fundamental principles and then start testing it out. That's what helped me grow. I read maybe a hundred plus books on all this stuff. That's not what changed me. What changed me is a few nights going out and actually introducing myself to women or like going on a few dates and pushing myself to finally step into my sexuality and flirt with them in different ways or be physical and try to go for a kiss. Those are the moments that changed me. Not some magic aha line that suddenly fixed all my fears but facing them in person. So you should start following the two to one rule, which means you should be spending two hours taking action in the real world for every hour you spend reading or watching self-improvement and dating advice. Number four is using online dating with crappy photos. Listen, the only thing that matters with online dating nowadays is your photos, period. That's like gonna dictate 80 to 90% of your results because what's the user behavior? A woman's gonna get on a profile and in the first second or two, if that picture sucks, she's already swiping off. She's probably not gonna dig forward most of the time. If it's good enough, she'll start to look at your other photos, which will hook her in, and that's what's gonna make her more likely to either explore your profile content or match then and there. It is not good enough to have average photos or okay photos or mediocre photos nowadays. Everyone has incredibly powerful cameras in their pocket. Everyone's getting better at it with social media and Instagram. If you wanna stand out in the dating pool, you gotta level up your photo game, period. I say this a lot, but I would rather a guy spend three hours taking better photos of himself that'll last him for years than three months just swiping endlessly and being miserable the entire time. Basically, almost every guy that comes into me for coaching and is like, I hate online dating, I don't match with the women I want, I don't really have enough opportunities to get dates, and then we dig into it and the photos are garbage. They're low quality, they don't edit them, they're just selfies in their bathrooms, they're with poor lighting, there's nothing that showcases what they do with their friends or their hobbies, and that's what's making the experience so damn tough. So you could take the simple way out and hire a photographer and do a photo shoot, which I think is absolutely great. But also if you don't wanna do that and, and you don't wanna pay that money, you can also learn the basics of this and still stand out from most of the other guys with just a few hours of research and practice. So spend a few hours going on some YouTube videos to learn the basics of lighting and composition and posing and just also a little bit about editing your photos, even with like the built-in iPhone or Android editors. That alone will make a world of a difference and especially the editing part like no photographer will give you a set of photos without editing them you don't have to like photoshop muscles or anything but you need to understand how to fix highlights and exposure and color temperature and a few of those things to make a huge difference in how they look with about 30 seconds of effort and then go practice quantity 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 a good photographer is going to take about three to 10 times as many pictures of a subject than she'll actually give for the final selections. Because there's always these little nuances of lighting hitting you and your facial expression and maybe changing the pose and one of them is gonna look good. If you just go out and you take one picture of yourself and you're like, ah, oh, pictures of me always look terrible. Well, that's why. You need to practice, you need to change the angles, you need to adjust them, you need to smile, you need to look serious, you need to do some bursts and eventually you're going to get a good photo. One final neat little trick is to get a little portable tripod stand or these flexible tripods that can wrap around things and, you know, bring them outside when you're on a hiking, you know, trip or walking around the city or going out to an event and start taking some photos yourself. Prop your camera up somewhere, wrap it around a tree branch, like I said, put it on timed burst mode, 
Take a step back and let the camera take a bunch of photos of you from the back camera. Use the back camera instead of the front because generally the quality is a lot better. That way it'll look candid like you didn't take just a bunch of selfies and as if somebody else got a couple of cool pictures of you. Number five is chasing women that aren't into you. And this is an enormous time waster for most men. They talk to a girl online that they find attractive, or maybe they had it one date with, and this girl is like responding enough, but maybe with short messages, or aloof, or she doesn't take much time to get back to you, or she's vague about making plans or flakes on them, and yet you still keep pursuing that. And I know you might be like, oh, well, girls play hard to get and you just have to play the game a little bit. Sure. Like, I understand it. Like, a girl's not going to throw herself at you right away, and they generally play a little coy. But if they're interested in you, they're not going to make it so difficult to connect or meet up that you're spending days and weeks on end just trying to make that happen. They're going to play a tiny bit hard to get, but then generally respond and actually invest in you. And a lot of this really comes down to ego, right? You're like, well, she's so hot, and if I can just make this happen, then I prove I'm good enough or I've succeeded and I've done it. But in reality, that's not a virtue to me because you are still lowering your own self-respect and acting needy to get somebody's approval who might not even really care about you. And in general, those circumstances almost never work out. Like there's almost no situation where a girl is just constantly like not respecting a guy's time, keeping them as a backup plan, flaking and canceling, and then suddenly realizing she's madly in love with him and he's like the top choice. So my rule is, if you try to invite someone out twice at most three times and they're never committing or they're not really responding to you or they're flaking out on plans, then move on and go focus on other people who are excited about you. This woman already knows that you want to connect. So continuing to hound her isn't going to make things better. It's only more likely to push someone away. So you go focus your energy elsewhere. And if she's really excited to connect or invest and maybe something else was going on in her life, then she can make that move to proactively reach out. But you don't do this as a tactic to play games and like try to get her to invest in you. You genuinely look ahead and only invest in her if she's shown you that she's willing to do the same. Number six is not making a move until a later date. A lot of guys start going on dates with women and they're just so excited to be on a date that they don't want to ruin that chance. So what do they do? They just basically go into like preservation mode where they don't want to rock the boat. Where on a first date, they don't even consider really flirting or trying to move it forward or being physical or going for a kiss. And they figure, okay, great. Maybe I won't do this the first couple of dates just so we can get to know each other. And then when she actually gets to know me and we're more comfortable, then I'll start showing interest and kind of pushing things forward. But the problem is that one, when you look at almost every courtship study, most women know pretty quickly on a first date, within like 30 minutes, how they feel about you. Doesn't mean that they're sold on you and like gonna sleep with you, but they know, is this somebody that I could potentially be interested in or not? Also, if they're setting up a date, especially from online, they know why you're both there. You're both trying to explore the option of romance and they expect that a guy who's into them is going to eventually make a move. So most women are not going to be upset if you try to show them interest. They they know that it's coming. What they're going to be upset about is if they're not ready or they're not feeling it and they set up a boundary and then you continue to cross it or try to like guilt them or manipulate them or pressure them into it. That's where you're going to get into trouble. But taking the shot is still the right thing to do. It shows that you have a lot of confidence and if she's just not ready at that point and you're cool with it, that makes her actually respect you more where you're a leader that she can trust who's going to be honest with his intentions, but who's also chill if you guys aren't at the same stage yet. But if you don't make a move nowadays, even on the first date and often on the second, you won't get another. Because the act of showing desire for somebody, basically flirting, is what actually starts to arouse them in the moment and see you as a romantic prospect. So if they're never seeing that side of you and they're never feeling that side of you, then they're going to go, huh, I was going on a date to see if I also don't just want to be friends with this guy, but I could imagine being close and intimate and hooking up with them. But we didn't really feel that. So ah, this isn't somebody I should keep seeing and she's going to move on. So stop shooting yourself in the foot and start moving things forward. And last, number seven, is putting all your eggs in one basket. 
Here's the harsh truth. Any young, attractive woman almost always has a bunch of guys that she's talking to or at least on the back burner. That could be matches from online, maybe people she dated but didn't really feel that strongly about, other guys she knows in her social circle. There's always options on the table and she's not just focusing on one person at a time. But a lot of men do the opposite where they talk to one girl on online and they think it's going well and they basically just stop pursuing everyone else. They stop messaging other women, they stop matching, they stop trying to set up dates because they're like, cool, I have somebody that's moving forward. I'm I'm really excited about them and I'm going to put my energy into them. The problem is nowadays we date around all the time and people casually date and they flake and they cancel and they change their minds and they date somebody else and odds are that the person you're pursuing may not actually continue seeing you or may not even explore a date in the first place. So if you're going through this cycle of where you just focus on one girl at a time, you spend a week or two doing that and then it fizzles and doesn't work out, you're starting from square one every single time and kind of having to build up your pool of options. Additionally, we know that if we have lots of options, in life, then we live with that abundance mindset. We're not over-invested in one thing working out. We can, you know, manage our time between a bunch of different options, and we're not so desperate or obsessed with making something work. But the opposite happens when we have no options. We get into scarcity mindset, and we become so terrified of losing that one chance that our behaviors reflect that. And that's where guys get clingy and focus all their attention on one person and don't really, like, go out and do anything else. And that's a huge turnoff for women and much more likely to sabotage your chances with them. I'm not saying like you need to be a player and have a harem of women. What I'm saying is you need to keep your options open until one of those connections starts to materialize and you invest in one another and start to grow that connection. And then you can build a more meaningful relationship from there. Use your time wisely. It's the one thing you'll never get back.